methodologies to measure market competition. So I've been asked to cover three questions in this short video. The first is what are the different purposes from the CMA's perspective of measuring competition at wide sector or economy levels? The second is what is our experience of analysing competition at the sector or economy level? And the third is how useful we have found this analysis. So I'll cover these questions in turn. So first of all, what are the different purposes for carrying out this analysis? I think there are at least four. First of all, I think putting together data on sector and economy-wide metrics in order to track how those change over time can be very useful. As we all know, there's currently a significant concern over apparent increases in profits and concentration across a range of countries. Now, obviously, there's a debate, a heated debate, about how such increases should be interpreted. But from a UK perspective, an important initial requirement for thinking about this debate must be creating a decent set of data to understand what those trends are over time. We can then argue about what they show. Second, to the extent that the analysis is meaningful, and I'll return to that later, this sort of analysis can be used for prioritisation purposes. At a very simplistic level, if we find profitability and concentration rising in a particular part of the economy, then knowing this allows us to consider whether there's a competition concern there or whether actually that rise concentration or profitability is for competitively benign reasons. As Jason Furman noted in testimony at the Federal Trade Commission back in 2018, there is both good and bad concentration. So the mere fact of an increase in concentration does not imply a problem, but it does suggest that a closer look is warranted. Third, we really want to understand concentration trends in the UK better than we currently do. The mismatch, on the one hand, between the available data based on four-digit SIC codes and high-level trade statistics, and on the other hand, relevant antitrust markets is high. We want to improve that situation. The work that Tomaso Duso and his collaborators have done recently using evidence on genuine antitrust markets is a really interesting piece of work and a significant contribution to the debate, but it's not UK focused and it does rely on merger activity in the sector. Fourth, we'd like to understand the link between competitive intensity and productivity better. There's a long-standing question as to why productivity growth has been so weak in the UK, particularly since the 2007-8 crash, and weak competition has been raised as one part of that explanation. So, second question, what's our experience of analysing competition at the sector economy level in the CMA? Well, we've made three attempts. The first attempt is early on in the life of the CMA, back in 2014-15, we carried out a very simple analysis of HHIs across markets as defined by SIC codes. Second piece of work was to look at the relationship between productivity and concentration. This work was carried out in the light of our 2015 survey paper, Productivity and Competition, a summary of the evidence. Neither of these pieces of empirical work involve substantial resources and neither was published because neither provided robust results. So the concentration measures that we found, the HHI didn't seem to be correlated to markets where there was a plausible concern. And when we looked at the relationship between concentration and productivity, uh, similar problems in particular because we don't have in the UK in um, set to level total factor productivity analysis uh, statistics available. So the third attempt uh, was our recent state of competition report that we published in November 2020. This was a much more substantive piece of work and one that we'll be updating and extending on a regular basis. So I'm going to talk in a little bit of detail about that now. So what analysis did that report include? Well, it included an analysis of concentration in the UK between 1998 and 2018 using four-digit SIC codes as proxies for markets. Obviously an imperfect proxy, that's what's available from the data. We found that concentration across the economy rose significantly after the 2007-08 recession. And whilst it has fallen back a little bit since 2010, it's still on average three percentage points higher now than it was pre-recession. That's obviously an important data point to know uh, if we're concerned about what might happen post-pandemic. Uh, another piece of analysis we included in that report was looking at churn among the top firms in each market. We found that this has declined since 2007-8 recession, again suggesting a decline in dynamism in these markets. Third piece of analysis was to look at partial ownership links between firms. So this looked for evidence on firms within a sector owning all or part of other firms in that sector. Uh, and also looking at whether particular individuals own more than one 
or parts of more than one firm in the sector. And the idea of this analysis was to test whether effective concentration in these sectors is actually higher than it appears on the raw statistics. Um, we found, found that whilst that's not the case at the economy-wide level, there are some sectors for which actually looking at partial ownership does significantly increase concentration. Another piece of analysis we did was to look at firm level markups and profitability. We find that average markup in the UK have risen by about 7% over the last two decades, most of that in the top decile profitable firms. We also looked at EBIT uh, data that takes account of fixed costs. Interestingly, we find those actually being largely flat over the period. A little bit of an increase for the firms at the top of the distribution, but generally quite flat. Uh, finally, we did also undertake a more granular analysis of a particular se sector in order to see if broad market level statistics could provide useful information at a sector level. Um, that part analysis was not published. It was interesting, but because of data issues, not robust. Okay, so I've mentioned three pieces of work the CMA has carried out. It's worth noting that analysis of this type is not new. So there's earlier work in the UK carried out by the Office of Fair Trading, one of our predecessor bodies as far back as 2004, maybe the analysis even earlier. Um, that work used a number of metrics to identify particular problem markets, so churn rates, advertising sales ratio, productivity, level and volatility concentration, profitability, complaints data, innovation data. What is, to my mind, very striking about that analysis is that the list of most concerning markets on the basis of each metric, with one exception, bears almost no relation at all to those sectors that have actually raised competition concerns over the last 20 years. The exception is that the complaints data, which does seem to be reasonably well correlated with markets that genuinely raise concerns. Okay, so third question, how useful have we found this work? Okay, well, the first point to note is that we've been asked by the UK government to repeat the state of competition analysis on a regular basis. So that suggests that government at least considers this to be useful analysis. Second, the analysis clearly comes with lots of caveats. The concentration metrics are not based on relevant markets. That's where Tomasso's work uh, comes in. There are significant methodological concerns around some of the markups analysis, the partial ownership analysis require further refinement, the data on trade flows into each sector is not granular enough to identify how many firms account for those imports, and so on and so on. So clearly lots of caveats with the data. Third, however, we think there is considerable scope to find this analysis and so make it more useful. For instance, we need to go beyond the broad SIC level codes towards narrower markets, the methodological issues around measuring markups, profit markup are subject of considerable research, so progress will be made on that front. Uh, we've been provided with funding specifically to improve the partial ownership data analysis, so we'll be doing that. Um, there is scope to make the trade statistics more granular. We're also considering the possibility of adding a socioeconomic aspect to the analysis. You know, have we seen concentration or profitability rising more than average in the, when we look specifically at essential goods rather than at discretionary spend goods. Uh, fourth, we've not yet uh, sought to replicate the work we did on concentration and productivity, but that is definitely an area for future work. So to wrap up, my view is that analysis of, of this type holds out the prospect of being very useful in the future, but considerably more work is required to get us to that point. So I'm very glad the UK government seems keen for us to carry out this further work. However, I don't mean to suggest that the work we've done so far has, has no value or no value in the short run. Even in the short run, significant changes in metrics at a sector level can indicate places where competition authority needs to look. Where concentration has risen significantly, for instance, it's important to understand whether this is benign or indicative of a potential competition issue. If the expected wave of firm exits post-pandemic does occur, as expected by the IMF, then that will become very relevant. The partial ownership analysis has also highlighted a few sectors where simple concentration measures are significantly underestimating effective concentration. So that's a useful data point for us to know, particularly when we're looking at that mergers that might arise in that sector. And that's even ignoring the whole common ownership issue. Um, the evidence on rising markups in the UK is consistent with much other work. So while the causes of this phenomenon are not yet fully understood, our results indicate that we do need to be part of that ongoing debate. It's not something that we in the UK can ignore. So, look, much work still to be done, but a potentially very fruitful line of research. Thank you for your attention.